Hello, we're here today with Major General Mark Inch, the Army's Provost Marshal General, to discuss the seventh annual Anti-Terrorism Awareness Month. Welcome, Major General Lynch. Thank you. What is anti-terrorism awareness and why do we need it? Well, let's maybe focus on the word awareness. In anti-terrorism awareness, it's really a mindset in which we want not only law enforcement, but really our entire community aware of their surroundings and contributing to identifying that which is suspicious in the environment so that it can be reported uh, appropriately to law enforcement. So the obvious thing is a mindset that we should always have as we move through our environment. What is Anti-Terrorism Awareness Month? Well, in the month of August each year, and this being the seventh uh, year that we've done this, is we focus in on anti-terrorism to heighten the awareness of the community to both the resources that are available for understanding as well as just giving a little push for training that we want uh, the community to have, soldiers to have, family members to have, and certainly to refocus uh, law enforcement as well to the risks. And doing it in August Recognizing that the next month in September uh, and the tragedy that happened in 9-11, it's an appropriate month to, month to do so. What has changed as far as the terrorist threat we face today? Oh, that's a great question. In the past, I think we've placed a lot of emphasis uh, in our anti-terrorism awareness focusing on our installations, protection to our installations, uh, units, military units in movement. The many attacks of this last, last year has certainly highlighted that whether it is ISIL or other organizations is their focus on soft targets. So think of what has happened, be it in, in France, both attacks in France and Brussels, or Orlando, and even most recently in, uh, in Dallas, that the perpetrators of these attacks have identified social gatherings, uh, large gatherings of, of personnel, uh, easy targets. And so with an understanding of that, it really increases the importance of our need for awareness to see that which stands out in normal environments, normal gatherings, whether you're at a nightclub, you're at a music festival, whether you're at uh, some type of social gathering, and a recognition that the threat isn't just limited to the use of IEDs, large bombs, but it could be small arms, certainly, um, or even a truck, as we saw in France. What have we done in the past year to help defend against this new threat? Well, let me divide it into kind of two areas. So what we've done at headquarters level and then what we have made available to the community to be more aware of the threat. So at headquarters level, we've placed a lot more emphasis on insider threat and those ways we can identify insider threat, as well as other, we've established a working group, for example, uh, to address unmanned uh, aerial threats uh, as um, in the proliferation, frankly, of drones. Um, and we, we have certainly worked hard to make materials available, you know, through our portals and our websites, which we'll discuss about in a little bit, um, with the, uh, to not only our military members, but to our family members, and this year, in, even to our retired community. Are there specific focus items for this Anti-Terrorism Awareness Month? There are. First, let's just get back to the fundamentals. We want folks to be aware and we want them to report suspicious activity. Whether it's through iWatch or iSalute, uh, we, we just want very active reporting of that which looks out of place. Now, the focus, some of the focus areas that certainly we're gonna be looking at uh, here and promulgating through this month is uh, looking at social media and the use of social media both as a, the, the enemy used it to promulgate uh, and encourage attacks, and then looking how those attacks are occurring with uh, the um, radicalized individuals. You know, I'll stay out of the political side of all of this, but certainly there are those individually or through encouragement with groups or through the direct involvement of groups that are encouraging violent activity, 
here in the United States or around our military installations. So we're going to bring our focus definitely in on that threat. Is there more that we need to do? Well, there's always more that we need to do. Um, when I think of our online um, computer activity for all of us, you know, we do need to recognize there's a real cyber threat and we make ourselves more vulnerable with uh, poor discipline of our online profiles. So I would encourage uh, more personal discipline in our use of social media, as well as institutionally our understanding of, of insider threat and cyber threat uh, and how those mediums are used. Uh, I would just encourage with the material that we've made available uh, that we take the time to do the training and to really learn the material as we build our awareness and we build how we defend ourselves from the terrorist threat. How can viewers obtain more information about Anti-Terrorism Awareness Month and how to protect themselves and their families? Well, first, be current on your anti-terrorism level one training. Uh, then reach out to either your anti-terrorism officer or your anti-terrorism coordinator at the unit, and they can provide you a lot of material on the anti-terrorism program and on the iWatch program. Then, certainly we have materials that are available, first on the anti-terrorism enterprise portal, and that's for our military members uh, and have the and government employees for access to that, but also for our family members and our retired community being able to go to Army One Source. And again, that our materials are available there for review. Oh. Is there anything else you'd like to say in closing, sir? Yes. So when I look at anti-terrorism awareness, I kind of take it from three levels. First is from leadership, starting with our senior leaders, the Chief of Staff of the Army, the Secretary of the Army, through our commanders, Anti-terrorism is a part of our operational planning, and it, it's very important as we look towards daily operations, contingency operations, the protection of our installations to include anti-terrorism, and our senior leaders are very committed to that. At the second level, of course, then we have our law enforcement community and our great military police, Department of Army civilian police, Department of Army security guards, all our anti-terrorism officers, the institution that keeps this focus and keeps us protected at our installation, and the effort we put into that. And I'd, I just have to say how proud I am of the entire policing community and the security community uh, as we protect our families and, and our soldiers. But the point we are trying to make here with Anti-Terrorism Awareness Month is the importance of the entire community to the entire anti-terrorism program. You know, we are the sensors that are out across, and we know our, across the Army, and we know what our communities look like, and we know when something is out of place. And it's just so important that it becomes part of our daily habit that if we see something that looks out of place, if it just, I wonder if I should report it, the answer is always yes. If you just have that feeling, I wonder if I should, the answer is yes. So that's what I would conclude with, is the involvement of our entire community and the encouragement to our entire community to help the policing effort, the security effort, the anti-terrorism effort, and to make the operational planning a reality uh, through such active reporting of everyone across our military community. Thank you. Thank you, General.